Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is John Eichen, Executive Director of Rochester eBuilders, and on behalf of our Development Council, I'd like to welcome you to our another of our uh, Development Code update meetings. Um, we have uh, city staff, uh, Cindy Steinhauser and Ryan Yetzer uh, have joined us, as well as uh, Don Elliott and Austin Flanagan. Uh, from Clarion, the consultants. So thank you for taking time out of your day, uh, City and, and uh, Clarion, uh, to uh, present this to our members to give them an update. Uh, those listening, you can ask questions um, through the chat or the question um, area, and that's what I will be watching and looking for questions. And with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Mr. Elliott. Thank you. Thank you for having us uh, again. I, I almost can envision the uh, hotel breakfast room that we often meet in when, when we are able to be in Rochester ourselves and have breakfast with you guys at a meeting. Um, um, but we're not able to. So we wanted to take this opportunity to update you on where we are in the code. As you all know, COVID tends to slow things down. It's kind of like walking through molasses. Everything takes a little bit longer to do, but we have been moving ahead. Uh, cautiously with a lot of consultation and we wanted to give you an update just to know that uh, this is moving forward. I'm, I know you guys pay attention that we have a short presentation and we want to leave lots of time for questions through the chat. We do hope to be able to answer them all, either us or city staff. Uh, Austin Flanagan, who is also like me, a lawyer uh, and I'm, I'm a planner as well, in, uh, is going to go the first part of the introduction of the presentation and then I will pick it up from there. So Austin, here you go. Here's your first slide. Great, thanks, Don. Um, so I wanted to start with a couple introduction slides, talk about the project and where it stands. Um, so what is the UDC? It's a unified development code. It's gonna bring together all of Rochester's land development regulations. So it's intended to um, replace the current land development manual, and it's intended to do so in a simpler and more user-friendly format. And it's also meant to update the standards within that document to um, implement the city's comprehensive plan, plan to succeed. So what's all included in the UDC? Well, it's integrating the subdivision and zoning regulations. It's updating those standards to align with the plan to succeed. And it's also gonna be including some other regulations like the Minnesota State Shoreland Controls, Decorah Edge and airport related regulations. So included in subdivision regulations, that's gonna answer the question of how to create new lots and how to reconfigure old lots. Within zoning, we're gonna cover things like um, lot size, building height, setbacks, parking, landscaping, site layout, um, and some design stuff as well. So where does the project stand? We have delivered a staff and public draft of the annotated outline and crosswalk. The annotated outline and crosswalk is the document that summarizes our recommendations for changes to the UDC. It acts as a guiding document in the drafting process. So we've put that out in a public form, you can access it. And we've also put out a survey to gauge some feedback on those recommendations. And I'm gonna get into that survey, those survey results in just a minute. Most recently, we delivered installment one of the UDC, which covers districts and uses to staff. Staff's currently reviewing it. And we're gonna go through some of those major updates today. So let's go back to the survey that I just mentioned. So you can see a lot of the major themes that we pulled out of those survey responses. But to me, I think I can simplify this even further for you into three main things, which is simplify, streamline, and modernize. Simplify the review procedures, the language, and the organization streamline the approval processes and modernize the standards for best practices and to align with the comprehensive plan. Those are the main things we heard in the survey. Lastly, I wanna talk about scheduling. Um, this is pretty straightforward. I talked to you about those deliverables and here's where we are. Um, we've just delivered that staff draft and we will get a public draft out soon, hopefully by um, the beginning of fall, end of summer. With that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Don. He's gonna to talk to you a bit more about some of these substantive edits. 
So before I change the slide, I'm just going to talk about um, why, just to remind you, I, I almost feel like I can visualize some of the people on the webinar because I've, I've met you before. Others I probably haven't. They're probably new players in the, in the game. We strongly recommend, and the city has accepted, that we need to do this in parts. We need to lay out the district and uses to align them with plan to succeed and to streamline them and simplify them. Then we have to get into development standards, which is in shorthand, how good does it have to be? How do you need to lay it out? Not what can I do, but how do I do it? And finally, whose approval is going to be needed? Who? What are the steps in that process? Why don't we do it all at once? It kind of overwhelms people. It's trying to eat an entire elephant. You've got to cut it up. That's a bad metaphor. You have to break the problem down and processes, how simple the processes turns on, how objective the development standards are. How, develop, how objective and predictable and transparent the development standards are turns on, well, which districts do they have to work in? So we do it sequentially so that we don't have to go back and fix something. We put out the districts and uses, and that informs how we do the next step, and that informs how we do the next step. Then we put it all together and help you take it through the adoption process. This, is, this has been the game plan since the beginning in case you were new or had other things on your mind and were busy earning a living. I, this is a reminder. So I want to talk to you about in districts and uses, the drumbeat of response we've gotten, frankly, from everybody, uh, but particularly from elected appointed officials and builders is simplify it. I'm going to go through four tables very simply and we'll come back and talk to them more if you want to. We are trying to consolidate into fewer districts because complication at the district stage ripples through all the other elements of the code. I have green highlighted the things that are being consolidated. R1 and R1SA, which is large lot zoning, are being consolidated. I'll, I think we can answer the how do you do this when we get into Q&A. It can be done. We have done it all over the country. You have to be very transparent. What do you gain? What do you lose? What do we have to do to keep the right context and make sure you're still a good neighbor? R1X and R2 are being consolidated. Our CNNR, core neighborhoods, uh, neighborhood residential, is being removed because I, two years ago when we wrote R2X, it was intended to replace this. That's something it almost had never been used, if ever had been used. It was in your code, and when we said, so where is it on the map? People said, well, we actually haven't used it yet. When we wrote R2X, we said, well, we think this substitutes. So that one's gone. It would be gone. There's no land in that. And if there is, and I'm mistaken, Cindy and Ryan will point it out, and I'll answer that question. R2X. R3, R4 are basically carryouts. Now, I want to be clear. We were, you're not paying for eye wash here and eye candy. We are going to recommend changes in those standards. It'll be very transparent. It'll be footnoted. I'm only pointing out on this chart, it will not be a new district, nor will those three be consolidated. They will be updated with uh, transparent footnotes. Moving on from residential districts, and by the way, you should know that council has been pretty, several people on council have been, you know, more, more consolidation, fewer districts. So we are trying to be pretty aggressive. In mixed use, which means districts in which you can do um, by right residential or by right non-residential, either vertically or horizontally, B2 and B5 were small scale. They're being uh, consolidated into MXN, mixed use neighborhood. B1 carried over and renamed. MXC, mixed use center, There's we've renamed a B1 MXS because it is a street oriented. It's used along your streets. There are often medium scale centers that are called for in, in plan to succeed and that people want to see that are not just street oriented uh, commercial retail mixed use, but are center oriented as centers. That's new. That's a new zone district. The rest of them, I won't belabor. They are renamings of different things. B4, G, MRD turns into an institutional mixed use zone district, TOD. I will point this out, transit or development, we approved, city approved, we helped write nodes and corridors. There are discussions about the circulators going on and have been for years, which have suggested maybe there needs to be an even more intensive node for the big transfer points to get Mayo Clinic folks in and out of downtown on the west side, on the south side, and those, so we have mentioned village subdistricts. That's still in the air. We may not need it, uh, but we're putting it on the table because rather than create a whole new thing, we've laid a foundation for transit-oriented dated nodes and corridors. And I don't want to start over this. Uh, the ideas that are floated as to what needs to happen at those big transfer points are very much of a piece with what we did in nodes and corridors. So let's make this another subdistrict that would be more intense. CDC carried over, except that CDC Res, which was the fourth sub-district we think is going to re be replaced by one of the residential districts. You can see R4 
and CDC are very similar. They would become one thing and that subdistrict would go away. Non-residential, meaning you don't live here. These are business parks, light industrial, special, uh, special industrial. Those are renamings. There are no consolidations there. You have two places to hold land until you figure out what to do with it. That's unusual, by the way. Most newer codes don't do this. They, they, when you just, when somebody annexes land of the city, you figure out what to do with it. Um, but instead of having two, we've recommended having one. PUDs are technically not available in Rochester. Never have, have not been for some time. We are recommending that chapter come out. The processes for amending and maintaining them would have to stay in the procedures section, but we don't we don't think we need to have this in the code as a zone district. You have approved PDs. If you have one, you got one. And the processes for amending it and, and managing them have to stay in, but to treat it as if it's a zone district that could happen in the future does not need to happen. It's not, uh, it, it is being carrying over the processes. Now, Overlays, a second tier, if you don't speak zoning, these are things that supersede what's below. Whether it's stricter or more flexible, overlays are a second layer of zoning. Rochester International Airport Zoning Ordinance is a freestanding piece of legislation. It is being proposed as it relates to Rochester to being brought into the UDC so that property owners, investors, potential investors will know when they read the UDC without having somebody elbow them and say, hey, 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 you better go read the airport zone district they will find it as an overlay in the UDC. The Cora Edge carried over uh, based on the most recent version applicable in Rochester. You have down a destination medical center, downtown parking overlay and downtown parking overlay. Those are unusual to see in overlays. We can handle them in the base parking standards. Are we getting rid of those discounts? No, they just don't need to be overlays. Overlays like base districts, when you overcomplicate them, the complications ripple through the whole code increasing the chances of unintended consequences. So yes, we will keep the substance. No, not as an overlay. The three flood districts are described now as separates. We think they could be, in most cities, they're described as one with three subsets. Special district, this is something that we are recommending they be removed. I sh we can, if you'd like, share in more detail when you ask questions. Oh my gosh, how can that happen? Answer, the intent is, uh, th these are difficult. They're I, I won't say de facto PUDs, but they're like PUDs. They're one-offs. There are a number of them around the city, just like PDs, that take an inordinate amount of time and effort to administer and, and create unpredictability. Now, do we want to wipe them out? No. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this presentation short by saying, if somebody asks a question in chat about how in the world would you do this, I will answer it. Um, we have done it in other cities. We did it most recently in Albuquerque with 40 different types of this type of activity. Do we wipe them out? No, you keep what you've got. This is not the way to do it. And we and, and it is a time consuming process. But I will say that um, a number of people have said, you know, take a knife and drive a stake through the future use of this district. We don't want to do it. It is more trouble than it's worth. It leads to people over micromanaging approvals, which immediately become out of date and then have to be amended and amended and amended and amended. The same issues that lead people to say, you know what, we're going to stop doing PDs. Well, you stop doing PDs, they live on, and the basic land use permissions of SDs would live on, but they don't have to live fall in this form. We are preserving, you can take a look at a local character that we're pro pro uh, proposing be added. We can talk about that if we need to. Here's the structure, six chapters, to re-pull it apart, put it back together. Some of you have seen this. The beauty of this structure is 200 tells you what kind of a place. What's the menu, which I just went through? What's the menu of types of places that exist or are called for in Plan to Succeed? Allowed uses, what can I do on my property? Development standards, how do I lay it out and build it? Procedures, whose approval do I need? Four chapters. Bo uh, you know, bookmarked or um, sandwiched by boilerplate at the top and definitions at the bottom that collectively collect all the answers to those questions in those four chapters. Here's what you got today. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is a really unusual way to do it. Uh, it is extremely detailed. It answers a lot of questions for every single use in every single loan district. The problem is, in our opinion, it's overly detailed. It is so detailed that people routinely say, you know what, I'm not even gonna read this and try to figure out what it means. I'm gonna go through restricted development. It's become the de facto, well, I can either read something complicated or ask for permission. I think I'll go ask for permission. 
um, we need to get away from that. Part of our original mandate was get us to a system that gets us away to, from so much restricted development and incentive development. The blue and green is that these tables contain a combination of allowed uses in blue and development standards in green. I just explained the blue stuff will wind up in chapter 300. The green stuff will wind up in chapter 400. Over at the left, we have some, some of these are type approvals. Those would find it wind up in chapter 500. So that's what we've been working on. It takes a lot of time to make sure you haven't dropped anything through the cracks uh, or we just be clear and say, we think you ought to drop this through the cracks and what do you think? The layout of the districts would look like this, each district in a two page spread, purpose statement, illustrative picture. No, it's not regulatory. Yes, we'll get 29 questions about whether it has to look like that. No, it doesn't have to look like that. People get this over time. It's a picture to give citizens and others an idea of what the scale of the lot in the building and the types of buildings are. It is not regulatory. On the right side is a sub is a, a an axonometric, which does give you the basic regulatory stuff. Is there more? Yes, there's more in the next chapter. This is to give citizens, okay, well, I'm gonna buy a house in R1. What is it? How tall can it be? Can I put another story on it? How far back? How much open space? It's the basics. Uh, it, do, do you need to keep it consistent with the rest of the code? Yes, you do. Does the public appreciate it? Yes, they do. Here's a use table. That blue stuff that we're pulling out of your other tables would be organized into a table like this. Down the left-hand side, organized by logical category, is every use available in Rochester. That is not just being carried over. We have delivered a basic draft, which will soon become public, of how we would simplify that because every major city that is going through this process says, let's get rid of the micro distinctions between what is essentially the same use. Let's call it in a way that we in the public understand what it is and organize it logically. Around the top are the current zone district names, the new zone district names, and then this three-way breakdown, residential, mixed use, non-residential as a template to look at things. And the right-hand column is the if, ands, or buts. Take the ones of those micro conditions that deserve to be carried over, what note them if we recommend they get rid of, but if not, put them over here. So when you look at the code on the web or otherwise, development, what is cottage development? You can go to the definition, it's either allowed, P in this case means planning commission. Uh, S means staff approval. You can see the legend up at the top. Staff approval, planning commission approval, city council approval. V, I can talk about, is our proposal that if a building has been vacant for a period of time, that becomes a permitted or an, a, 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 a planning commission use in that area. Accessory use, T is temporary use, blank means no. Asterisk means you better go read the right hand section because there's something in there you should care about. These are hyperlinks. So if you're looking to Dwelling Cottage, can I do it over here? No, you can't. Can I do it here? Yeah, but I have to go to Planning Commission. Can I do it here? Yeah, staff could approve that. In any case, the asterisk means, yeah, but you better go read this because there are conditions, size, other conditions that affect it. But this out layout, almost every city in the US is moving to in one form or another because it allows the public to get it. Can they do that in my district? It allows you to say, can I build it in this district? And this is where we sort out a lot of restricted development stuff. If you routinely ask for something that is routine and traditionally allowed in that district, let's put it in this table. Once we put this table out, we'll ask you to say, let's ask the what if question. Well, excuse me, excuse me, the why not question. Why aren't you allowing that use in that district? Now, if you're a libertarian and you send it back with, an, with a staff approval in every disk, I will throw it in the round file. I don't need a political statement. But we will take seriously when you say, why don't you allow this in this district? I'm looking at the purpose. I'm looking at where it is in Rochester and I don't get it. Why would we have to, why would you allow that in either planning commission or staff? And the answer is good question. Let's, let's, let's look at this carefully because getting these aligned simplifies life a lot and takes a lot of pressure off of other parts of the code. This is what it's gonna look like. Last slide of substance. Um, I've shown you just because the next thing to come down the plate, the, the, the pike is districts and uses. We've shown you a sample of those things. I ask you to trust the process when it comes out. You cannot talk about zoning conceptually. You and the citizens and the elected and appointed officials have to read a draft to say, yeah, 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 no, no, yeah, yeah, oh, I don't understand. You have to look at a draft. That's what's coming at you. Later in the process, or, or related to that, I wanted to at least highlight special districts. In general, the approach on all but the Mayo, which is more or less embedded in Rochester's governance system, 
with our approach, and we can provide a graphic on this, is to say, what is this most like? Carry that in, uh, recommend that it be converted into that, into that district. And then the things that were negotiated, smaller lot size, different uses, et cetera, get carried forward as approved development approvals. So you did negotiate it, we get it. We're gonna carry that stuff forward. Basic things like lighting, landscaping signage, it really gums things up to have each one of these be a little novel about uh, separate approaches to landscaping lighting. We're probably gonna recommend that in most cases, it's pretty close to what you, the new code would say you need to do in that kind of an area. We're gonna recommend that you probably go to the standard lighting section or the standard landscaping section for that. But the densities, intensity uses, the things that when you show it to your attorney, he says, you know, you don't wanna give that up. That, that is something valuable that is not available in that base zone district. We say, fine, that will be carried forward in some form or another as an approval that is not being taken away by the simplification of the LDM. Simplified process, we are, you'll see it in six months or so. The type one, two, three, phase one, two, three is really unusual. It involves a lot more exposure and trips to council and planning commission than most codes have. We have tried to unravel that and say, we owe Rochester the view of how other well-governed cities handle this type of approval in this district. And frankly, not very much of it should go to council. Some of it should, but uh, I'll, I'll say this and I've said it to council and I'll say it again to council. Um, council should not be doing discretionary use approvals in 95% of the cases. Those should be handled either through objective standards applied by staff or through criteria that are applied by the planning commission. You do not want to go political on all these things. And Rochester system makes you go political repeatedly on these things. That is unusual. It is not a best practice. We're going to try to recommend an alternative. We've talked about consolidating uses. We've talked about new uses. I've talked about the right-hand column, which is use specific standards. And of course, the definitions will be reviewed and updated. I think that's it. Um, <clears throat> I know there will be questions. John, uh, you can field them. Um, uh, and I think all of us, Austin, me, Cindy, Ryan, are available to answer questions. Let me, before we do this, let's stop. Cindy and Ryan, did I miss something I should have proactively addressed? No, I don't think so, Don. Thanks, so. though. I'm good. Thank you. Okay, John, it's yours to handle in whatever way you'd like to, to, to ask on your own for me to go back to something that we talked briefly over or to raise brand new things or to say, Don, we were going fine, but now we're really concerned. Yeah, so this was, this was really the opportunity for us to, to hear a uh, status update and then uh, bring back to members for their questions as well. Um, and, and Rick may chime in here too if he's already has had some questions. Um, so, you know, I haven't had any uh, pop up, but we may have had some sent to us um, prior to. The, the challenge with, with the webinars is people know that we'll post them on our YouTube page <laughs> and they can, they can watch them at their convenience. Um, because our, our YouTube views always far exceed our um, attendance. <laughs> so yeah. um, I know I had, uh, I know I had the development council chair um, listening in, uh, so I'm sure I'll, I'll hear some uh, some things from him. Uh, well, and, and John, I would just throw out there for the those that are listening um, at, at the recorded session that uh, my email is listed there. Uh, so if anybody has questions following this presentation, um, feel free to email them to me. I can forward them to Don if you prefer Don's answer over mine. That's just fine. I can forward them along and, and uh, we can get your questions answered if you're watching this after the fact. Yeah, uh, we, had, we had some commercial builders chiming in and, and some uh, developers too. So um, I'm sure we'll have some other questions at some point in time. Rick, are you there? Yeah, yeah. I think one of the questions, I just got a text here. Um, one of the questions that was sent over was, um process based and not district and use base so it's kind of stage three or draft three but uh coming up in the table if there is a p for example for the planning commission in the event that the planning commission rules in a way you don't like uh i assume that's going to be addressed as part of phase three of this drafting so you go to either zoning board of appeals or your appeals directly to the city council and that'll be called out by way of the process correct 
Yeah. <clears throat> yes, you're ahead of us. Um, I could shoot my mouth off, but I would probably have Cindy slashing her, her hand across the throat and stop it. <laughs> there are, that's a tricky question. I have very strong opinions about what should happen. But yes, you know, the short answer to your question is we will definitely address that in the question. And you've already heard my general opinion, which is uh, I don't think a lot of, uh, I don't think you want to politicize things any more than you have to. Yeah, I, 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 think, like it. I think most of our members would appreciate uh, moving away from design on the dais, yep. um, which has happened in the past. So uh, that that's encouraging to hear uh, that from just from history. <laughs> well, and let me say this: I, I, since we are recording it, I don't want to shut off any other questions. Um, I, you folks have been great. It's been, uh, in my past experience, a pleasure to work with you folks. You, you, you like working and working in Rochester. You're aware of some of the complications and problems with the cert code. You've been very supportive. But um, I would just urge everybody who hears this, you know, to stay with the process. Um, uh, we have a we Clarion, but in partnership with the city, we have with our with all the cities we work with, we have a great track record of working this through, so that the questions get answered along the way. And things that are not a yes or no get discussed and, and a good compromise come along the way. So once again, you've been very supportive. I would urge people to do it. Uh, there's a temptation at this point to say, can't you tell me what the answer is? And the answer is, I can't tell you, but we have a process to reveal it in sequences in a very transparent way. And uh, uh, we do not, these things don't, very few of these fail and none of them get repealed. So by the time you're done, people are happy with it. So stick the course. I, I think I have one more. I had somebody text me another question is timeline. And on the last slide here, it says available this fall. Uh, I know, I think the first draft is going through staff comment right now. Uh, do we know when we'll have even a rough guesstimate of ready for prime time public consumption draft? That's a Ryan Yetzer question. Or yeah. Question. Yeah. Um, Rick, our, we're scheduled for city council um, for a study session October 19th. We're, we're only there because that's the only next opening. I do think it'll be ready before that. So we're working hard to, to bump that up. But let's assume we don't get bumped up. Um, I would say that this would be released sometime mid to late September to give you plenty of time cool. to review it before it goes to city council. And Ryan, that would be I just great. Wanna, I know. Just, sorry, can I just? Ahead, uh, I I think it's going to get the earliest we can get bumped up is October twelfth. We tried to get the fifth, but it but it'll be it's likely to be the twelfth. No, not the nineteenth. Yeah, and I would I would just hope that similar to some of the other stuff that we've been working on, that if we can see something before the first time it goes to council, that we can get some comments in. You know, especially if you guys are getting pushed back from X, Y, and Z, if we support or, you know, have a few edits, I think it's it's helpful to see it before it comes out in the agenda, if possible. That's yep, it. That's, I, a, that's I, our I plan. Answer. Absolutely that's agree. It. And 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 because it's a big document, you know, we'd like to get it to you a lot sooner. Give you more than a week, ideally, to try and take a look at it and turn it around. So. Um, uh, yeah, that's, our, our ability that's to high have, on our rate. Our ability to have meetings is a little compromised, you know, um, as well. No, because we're, we're doing this virtually. Um, so it, it does take a little bit longer to, to reach out to members, and, and, and Rick does a great job um, with that. So, and, and you guys well, have always been uh, very upfront, letting us know when things are coming down the pike. So I appreciate that too. And I would say just I just want to be very perfectly clear for everything. When you go to city council study session, I'm thrilled the city council is involved in this. I, I get worried when they're not. Um, so I am thrilled. But I want to be clear. We're not asking for a thumbs up vote. We are going to I strongly recommend that we brief them, get their feedback, get their concerns. If they don't want X done, we learn about it at that time. There will not be a second version of module one. We will take that into count as we draft module two or three when we put it all together that will be in there but you, you'll never get to the finish line if you modify it nor nor is it in case you were wondering that somehow we're gonna we're gonna replace one third of the LDM after they after they look at it 
These are briefings which result in guidance, which we roll into the entire process. It does not get, um, the, L the LDM does not get replaced in segments. It gets discussed until we have a good replacement. And we can't, we don't want to vote up and down when we brief them in October. I, I want them to let us go forward. I want to have enough confidence to say, I think we're, you're right. And with the following concerns, keep going. But I guarantee you there will be things that come up in module two, installment two, that we look at it and somebody says, change this. And I'll say, you know what? The right thing to do is to go back and change that in module one. That's a module one change. And something will come up in installment three and I'll say, I understand what you want. City agrees, but the right thing is not, it is two or one. So um, I, I want to be clear, not only, we're not, we're not, we're not shy of council engagement. I want them involved. But I don't want anybody thinking there's a date on which you got to speak about module one or installment one or forever hold your peace. That that day is about a, a year and a half down the road. Thanks, Don. All right. Well, I think if there's no other questions popped up, and um, thank you for your time. I uh, appreciate the communication, and as always, we'll we'll continue our conversations uh, as we move forward. And uh, with that, have a great rest of your day and enjoy the weekend. Thank, Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks everyone. Thanks everybody. Thanks you guys. Appreciate it.